It's the Hero Show. Welcome to the Hero Show, everybody, where every week we seek inspiration from great men and women seeking to become the heroes and heroines of our own lives. And you are here with your hosts. I am Andrew Bernstein. You are Robert Begley. How you doing today, Robert? I am doing fabulous, Andy. Big smile on my face because today we get to talk about chocolate. Mm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> One that's kind right. in particular. Milton Hershey, whose dates right. are 1857 to 1945. Uh, I don't know if he invented the, the chocolate bar, but he certainly made it affordable to millions yes. and millions and millions of American citizens. Yes, I could say, uh, and not just the chocolate bar. I mean, he had innovations, the, the you know, this Easter eggs, uh, Hershey's whatever kisses, the public right. okay, we wanted, can't the kisses, kisses, we're definitely going to talk more about those uh, in a minute. But <clears throat> this man just lived an incredible life, created his own farm. Uh, some themes we'll talk about here, Andy, is the difference between his father and himself. His father was a get rich quick type and Hershey Milton Hershey himself failed over and over again. So he quick get rich, quick lottery type versus persistence. Okay. That's mm -hmm. one theme. Next one is bringing joy to millions and millions of people who love to eat chocolate and making a prop, finding a way to make a profit out of that. Okay. Uh, that's another theme. And then the last one um, that I have in mind is this idea of vertical integration he had a farm where he had cows that could make the milk he had housing for his employees he had uh medical benefits and all, all the things that made productivity he could maximize productivity from his workers not only productivity but joy in life as well so uh Milton Hershey was what, mass production of goods uh advertising in newspapers and magazines, all of these things he took into his own hands. And that's why uh, the guy starts with 120 bucks, I think, in his pocket at age 14 and $21 billion Hershey is worth today. So he created an, an empire here. Yes, he did. And if you want happy customers, what better product than a good chocolate bar? Yeah, I have a Hershey that bar. <laughs> that is definitely true. That is, uh, you know, his name is synonymous, definitely in America. Uh, you know, we know, so actually he has from Swiss, I think Swiss German ancestry. And we know the Swiss are pretty good at making chocolate. Swiss themselves. make good chocolate. Yes, they do. <laughs> they do. But uh, Milton Hershey, he, as you said, Andy, uh, still to this day, they're just a lot cheaper. Yeah, uh, the, the, the cost, at least, you know, the quality yeah. might be higher for the Godivas and, and those other, uh, uh, you know, luxury uh, uh, chocolate bars. But <clears throat> no, abs but absolutely right. Absolutely yeah. right. You know, and his name is synonymous in America. With, Give me yeah. a Hershey bar. You know, it's like you don't even have That's to it. say chocolate. Yeah. Hershey bar is chocolate. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's great value in, um, you know, in providing bang for the buck. You know, as as, as they call, there's no question that Godiva and a lot of the imported European chocolates are really, really, really good, uh, but they're expensive. You know, and for every man and every woman, uh, Hershey the Hershey bar is cheaper, and it's still it may not be uh, Godiva quality, but it's very good. It's like uh, you yeah. know, I can't afford a Cadillac, but Honda is very good. You know, the Honda is a very is a very yes. good car. And uh, it's, it's similar. It's similar here. So, you know, Godiva and even Ghirardelli, which is an American product, you know, is 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 very good. It's more expensive. And the, but the Hershey bar, Hershey's Kisses, Hershey with a bar with almonds. This is, you know, this is really good stuff at a much lower price. Yeah. In fact, Andy, so if we go back 120, 130 years in time, um, confectionaries, OK, which is where he started working in. Uh, they were just for rich people. So that's already oh, yeah. one thing that he did. You you said you make you you give a quality product, you know, a uh, good bang for your buck, and then you're able to mass produce it. Now there's an entire new market, the middle class, who can afford this. And even eventually soldiers in, in World War One and Two, they that that was their that was their diet was three different kinds of uh uh 
Hershey candy bars. And so, uh, but this idea of, it, it's it's amazing that things have kind of circled around. Those luxury chocolates are for people who want to spend more, but they they could be like a, a top tier uh, people with wealth. And that those were the only ones back then in the 19th century who yeah. could afford this kind of stuff. And, and Milton Hershey changed that. Right. Milton Hershey reminds me in that way, and it's right around the same time, turn of the 20th century, as Henry Ford. Because, yes. uh, you know, Henry Ford didn't invent the automobile. You know, engineers on both sides of the pond were building cars and everything. But back then, they were, you know, turn of the 20th century, they were just toys for rich guys. A few yeah. rich guys owned cars, and they raced them, you know, for yeah. fun. And Henry Ford was the visionary who realized, uh, you know, the automobile has the potential to put the horse and buggy out of business. You know, this would be the right. to revolutionize personal transportation in the United States. But in order to do that, you have to manufacture them inexpensively. But you know, for mm -hmm. every man and every woman to be able to to afford them, and he and he he did the mass production process did. And by the way, uh, we should point out since we've um, honored both Carnegie and Rockefeller here on the Hero Show. That the way on in a free society on, on a free market, the way innovations build upon innovations, Carnegie's mass production of steel helped make it affordable for Ford, you know, to build you know inexpensive automobiles, and Rockefeller's mass production of petroleum products. What, what did gasoline cost at the turn of the twentieth century? Was it like two or three cents a gallon? That you know, was very inexpensive. Provided the yeah. inexpensive fuel for Ford. And so innovations build upon innovations. But the point, of course, here with the similarity is to Hershey is to make a quality product at an affordable price. And then, yeah. you know, both of them, both of them did that, Ford and Hershey, both, both did that. Yeah. So if we go back to his childhood and the uh, Ford's father, Harry, uh, I'm sorry, um, Hershey's father, Harry Hershey, he spent his whole life planning these schemes planning these get rich quick schemes and he would go from town to town often leave you know leave the family in search of the this uh scheme and he brought he brought Milton along with him and it just you know time and time again it just didn't work out and Milton started working I mentioned earlier at age 14 he started working in a confectionery and he loved candy he loved the idea of candy and so he would try to start yeah. his, he he's, a his dentist, first... he's a dentist's delight. Right? Exactly. Yeah. A lot, a lot, yes. a lot of yes. business. A couple of our <laughs> friends, yes. <laughs> Dan Sullivan and Sal Durante love these kinds of guys, right? That, that's yeah. they, you get a lot do, of business so. for the dentist, especially for kids who love their chocolate. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, but Milton goes, strikes out on his own, goes to Chicago, fails. Goes to New York, fails. Goes to New Orleans, fails. You know, he's bankruptcy over and over again, but he persists. And then he comes up with this idea of making caramel uh, with fresh milk from cows. And that's like his first success uh, running a caramel shop out in, in uh, Colorado. And then he comes back east uh, in the Lancaster area of Pennsylvania and he realizes that actually chocolate is the way of the future. And so he he buys property. He buys all this land and puts cows there. And he says, I'm going to do this whole operation, you know, myself. I'll be I'll be the guy, the main point uh, guy, instead of waiting for supplies from different types of um uh industries. And he was like, No, I'm I'm gonna basically do it myself. And this is where the persistence of trial and error failing and then continually and then coming up with a new idea because before uh before Milton Hershey the way chocolate was made was powdered milk with uh you know with the cocoa but when he once he started putting fresh milk straight from cows it could last longer it tasted better and then eventually he came up with wrapping it with special wrapping uh techniques and that gave it a lot longer shelf life. So the middle-class people, Andy, that we're talking about, they would see it. They would go into stores and see it on there, on their shelf for some time and, and just, and buy. And then they'd open up a newspaper and see an ad, you know, the Hershey's chocolate bar, you know, milk chocolate was, as I said, uh, his, his big thing. But then he expanded to almond chocolate and, um, 
and uh, uh, and dark dark chocolate too. Hershey manufactures. Yeah, today. and dark chocolate as well. And then he met a man named uh, Reese. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Tell us about that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this Harry Reese, and um, Harry Reese. You know, worked for for Hershey for for a while, and then you know, and, and for a number of years, you know, early twentieth century, then struck out on his own and developed different using Hershey's chocolate. Right and and developed uh, a new product you know, combined combined it with peanut butter, you know, and it became famous as Reese's peanut butter cups, my favorite uh, candy and the best selling the best selling candy in the in the United States. And yeah. so Reese's peanut butter cups using Hershey's chocolate, you know, sp spun off uh, of uh, Hershey's by one of their former employees. And later on, after I think after Harry Reese's death. Was it weren't the two companies merged again? The Reese's, yes. the Reese's Candy Company was was uh, was merged again with Hershey's. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I, I, think, I, I think remember. By, the old... I think by Reese's by Reese's sons. I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, Andy. And I remember the old TV commercials where one person just had the chocolate and the other one just had peanut butter, and they bump into each other, <laughs> and then it's mixed, and they taste it, and they're like, "Wow, this is." I didn't think this would work, and then once once you do uh, taste yeah. it, it works. Anybody. Yeah, if anybody who loves you know peanut butter cups, chocolate peanut butter cups, Harry Reese should have won the Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, what a, what a delicious <laughs> confection confectionery that that is. And uh, yeah, it's a spinoff from uh, from Milton Hershey's company because Reese used Hershey's milk chocolate, right, to to yes. make his own his own products. He yes. was in he was in he had his own shop or factory in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and I think his original candies. That had the, had like the the writing on it made in Chocolate Town USA, right. meeting, meeting Hershey Pennsylvania made in Chocolate Town USA. So, uh, yeah, Hershey's yeah. and and Reese's the two the two uh, confectionaries and the two companies uh, you know for like very merged together in you know very close relationship. Yeah, and you even mentioned the town, Andy. So in the early twentieth uh, century, he's Chocolate Town. Right? It <laughs> was Chocolate Town, and. <laughs> Hershey, Actually, they voted. They, the, the uh, Milton Hershey did not want the name Hershey. He, he, to, to the town to be named, but he uh, put it like to a vote, and the, you know the councilmen and the public. I guess they voted for that to be a town, which I, I've been to. It's a fun place now. There's a theme park. There's chocolate factories. I mean, still to this day. You know, when when they name a town after you, and it's a town millions of people go to every year, you you kind of know you've made it. But coming back, Andy, to the to the recent, when the, what you can see why the city fathers wanted to name it Hershey, the Hershey Chocolate Company was already on the map. He was famous and popular. That's right. This helped put the town on the map. That's that right. Uh, that thank you, Andy. That's that's a really good point because yeah, it was just farmland. It was yeah. just massive farmland with no bailing address. You know, no zip code, no, no, none of that. And and uh, but then he built from nothing. Here's the the creativity and the the innovative mind, who the visionary who can see. I want to put a factory here. I want my own, you know, my own farming. Uh, I want medicine. I want schooling as well. There's still to this day Hershey schools. You know, there's scholarships mm -hmm. that uh, that that students win every year. So yeah, there's several just, thousand several thousand students at Hershey at Hershey School, right? Hershey yeah, school. yeah. But coming back to the Reese's uh, peanut butter, what holiday do you do you think of uh, in America where Reese's you see them on the shelves and we just passed it recently, Valentine's Day. That's the holiday yeah. I think of. Actually, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Reese's. I think of Halloween. Oh, Halloween. Okay, okay with the pumpkins. They're, they're, with yes, the with the yeah. right with the pumpkins because that's even that color orange. But what I was getting to, Andy, yep, you anticipated me is that Valentine's Day was not a holiday until Hershey made the chocolate kiss, and that became uh, a way for um, middle class to have these small little kisses and turn they literally turned that uh, into a holiday. I mean, everyone thinks of Hallmark. Now they probably had something to do with it, but on, on there's a program the the food that made America, um, uh, the food that made America, and they cover the different ones that are associated, different foods that are associated with holidays, and they talk about Milton Hershey uh, with that, and and how Valentine's yeah. Day became a you know be, because right. of that. So you, that's, yeah, but that's, I have a good Valentine's Day story that involves both Her sure. Hershey and, and Reese. 
So, you know, when my daughter was very young, you know, your niece. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, mm -hmm. I mean, what's Valentine's Day all about? It's about men generally buying chocolate. <clears throat> you know, at Hershey's Kisses, I think was, like you said, was the first, your big seller for Valentine's yeah. Day, right? Back, back in the day. Buying chocolate for their girlfriend or wife or, or daughter. And so... You know, when Penny was very, Penny was very young, I'm in the store. I think there's all these fancy chocolates and everything. And I'm thinking that may be wasted on a little kid. That's something you give to your girlfriend or your wife. Yeah. So I asked, there was a, you know, a, a woman and, you know, an adult, I don't know how old she was, 40s. I asked her, I said, excuse me. I said, do you have, do you have children? She said, yes. I said, I'm thinking about getting, she said, how old your daughter? She said, I said like two or three, whatever it was. She said, that's wasted on little kids, you know, just, just get her a bag of Reese's peanut butter cups, you know, <laughs> okay, you'll get wow. her, you'll get her, get her some Hershey kisses, you yeah. know, and, and she's right, that one was right, you know, for, 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 for your girlfriend or your wife, who's, a, you know, an, an adult woman, you know, the dime of chocolate is great, but, you know, for a three-year-old child, it's, you know, it's, no, the, the, the Hershey kisses are the way to go, or the Reese's peanut butter cups, those are, those yeah. are the way to go for you know on on Valentine's Day for your daughter, for your young daughter. When she gets older, of course, his splurge are, are more expensive chocolate. But anyhow, yeah, Valentine's Day became a thing, and I think you're right. The Hershey, Hershey kisses were a big big part of the impetus for that. Yeah. Right? Men men started giving Hershey's kisses to their sweethearts. Right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So <clears throat> I I have two Hershey kiss stories. One one is Christmas uh, time. One year. I can't remember how how young I was, but uh, we grew up in a poor family and even Christmas gifts were optional. And my mother says, okay, this year, all you're getting is a hug and a kiss. All right. <laughs> so she gives a hug and then she pulls out these big, <laughs> oh. <laughs> she kisses, you know, there's like <laughs> one kind here and, you know, nine of them for her nine children she gives them out and of course we got real kisses but then decades later i meet carrie ann and andy you're totally right one uh one valentine's day she gets me this uh this one big uh kiss and it's like <laughs> yeah the small ones are for kids but when you're an adult if you still like the you know hershey's chocolate it could it could serve that uh purpose as well so i mean Absolutely. there's so much joy the thing that we're talking about andy here is also the joy that's associated with eating chocolate you know, like it's something to savor. It's it's part of an occasion, whether it's a holiday or just a you know just a gift or just a, a simple uh, a simple treat uh, for yourself. And absolutely, I'm, and on Valentine's, let's, let's let's get romantic here for a minute. I mean, I know I know people have been known to, and I've been one of them. You know, take a Hershey kiss with my sweetheart, put it in her mouth, and then kiss her while she's you know got the Hershey kiss. <laughs> In her in her mouth, and it's very romantic, right? I mean, that's why it's okay. called Hershey Hershey's Kiss, isn't it? It's well appropriately named there, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, um, absolutely. So the man has just, you know, we've we've covered his idea of vertical integration, the joy he's made. He made profits, you know, by bringing creating this value and then bringing it to people uh, all over the world. You know, we mentioned it here in America, but of course, everybody everywhere enjoys. Uh, Hershey's chocolates, uh, a town. Yeah, how big? How big a seller is Hershey's chocolate overseas? Do you know? By any, by any chance? I, I don't know the breakdown, in, but Andy, in twenty-one billion. Yeah, yeah, twenty-one. You know, yeah, that's, only, that's, so, a lot, yeah, that's a lot of chocolate sold. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So there's a there's there's a lot of kisses in there. You know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. Let's, just put, let's just put it that way. Uh, but I, to me, just the entire topic is, it, it, I look at it as like this benevolence the benevolence of the american mindset where you know what we want we want to create this value that gives people joy that certain occasions are uh uh put with it you know we mentioned halloween valentine's day even christmas time there is when you'll see the the big hershey's kisses like on sale and uh all of this comes from one man who failed you know, over and over again in business, but had that persistence to continue on. And that's, those are the things that get me excited when when I, I think of a Milton Hershey. Right, right. And there's one other point that I'd want to make about Hershey and uh, and a number of other uh, business, business. I'm going to put on my author's cap, now the author of the Capitalist Manifesto. Yeah. Uh, um, because, you know, it's a Marxist belief 
that in order for a businessman to profit, they have to pay wages as low as possible, right? To keep their costs yes. down. And you and so you pay low wages. And I'm discussing Marx in class. You know, I may I'm I'm making the case for Marx and the students are all nodding and it makes sense to them. You know, yeah, and I'm so tempted, you know, when we get to Ayn Rand later on, I'll blast Marx. But um, you know, but I'm so tempted at the time to say to, to bring out some examples, you know, including Milton Hershey, that uh uh, Henry Ford doubled wage rates, you know, at, at the Ford Motor Company. John D. Rockefeller, Standard Oil, paid wage rates significantly above market scale. Yes. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the Westinghouse, George Westinghouse, you know, was, yeah. was known for taking very, very good care of his workers. Uh, mm -hmm. And so is Milton Hershey, right? The yeah. Hershey, Hershey, Hershey realized, you know, that you have a, 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 an industrial town and you you want to take care of your workers. You want them, you know, make enough money, take care of their families. They're well fed, you know, and uh, have you know have have medical care and such. And of course, the principle here is that Hershey understood, and and um, Westinghouse understood, and Ford and Rockefeller, and many other businessmen understood is you don't make money on having the cheapest labor force. You make money by having the most productive labor force. Mm -hmm. And anybody who's, you know, everybody out there in Hero Land, everybody's is working or you have held a job and you know, at any job, some people really hustle. They work hard. They, you know, they, they and other people loaf, you know, they're, 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 they're not working very hard, but you want the best workers. You got to pay for and yes. when you do, it reminds me of something that Red Auerbach, the former head of the Boston Celtics, said when he when he paid Larry Bird a big salary. He said, I like paying Larry Bird a lot of money because the more money I pay him, the more I could ask him, you know, more I could, more I could push him to do. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, that, and that's true. When, you, when you're paying top dollar here, you could push, you could push these guys. And the most productive labor force doesn't need that much pushing anyway. You know, right. they take, they have a, they have a very strong internal, internal work ethic. And Hershey realized that he took really good care of his workers, schools and you know, comfortable living arrangements, high salaries, you know, and he had the most, and, you know, one, one last point is when Henry Ford doubled wage rates for machinists, you yeah. can bet the next day he most likely had a line, you know, out his door, down the block and around the corner of every, probably every machinist in Detroit of whom he then had his pick. So, yeah. uh, yeah, Milton Hershey's a very smart businessman, and, and he uh, he he knows he he knew that truth, and that you know Marx and Engels, what a shock, uh, are just wrong. <laughs> yes, know, on this point. Yeah, even Andy during the Depression, the American Depression, nineteen thirties, Milton Hershey was still employing. He didn't lay off anybody. He wanted you know he wanted them to keep their jobs. I mean, we know production was down. They weren't selling as much because people didn't have as much money to buy. But his point was keeping workers happy. You know, a, a happy worker is a more productive worker. You know, mm -hmm. that's, oh, that's also another, you know, another really important point is that if you keep them happy, they'll stay and they will be more yeah, creative. They'll bust their butt for you. Yes, they'll right? they'll bust their butt and and their mind too. They'll yeah. think of new ways that uh, to do things faster, cheaper, more efficient. All of these great industrialists, Andy, that that you mentioned, these great businessmen, they see the mind. They they it's not just brute labor here that we're talking about. They see they're looking for creative ways to make a better product. Yeah, that's to right. reach that's, more people. Right, that's a good point. Uh, when you pay the highest wages, you're going to attract the most productive workers. And as Ayn yes. Rand showed us in Atlas Shrugged, if you guys haven't read Atlas Shrugged yet, I strongly urge you to do so. It's a great, great, great novel. Uh, but she showed us the mind is, is, is you know, the man's survival instrument and the, the means by which we create wealth, you know, produce goods and everything. And so when you bring in, when you're, when you're hiring the most productive workers, it going along with that is you're hiring thinkers, you know, people yeah. who are people who are, are tend to be more innovative, more creative and, and yeah. so on. And, and so, yeah, that's what you get when you pay higher wages. They don't, you know, why would your guys want to leave that? You, you, you're already paying right. the highest wages with the best work conditions uh, available. And so you, mm -hmm. you get them and you keep them. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I would say, Andy, if there was something I could uh, cr critique Milton Hershey on, 
I would probably be about 10 to 15 pounds lighter if I didn't eat so many of these things. <laughs> but but other than that, <laughs> I don't have too much else. <laughs> I know I agree with you. I love dark chocolate and uh, and Hershey's dark is dark chocolate is very good. You yeah. know, it's a very good product and it's less expensive, like we have said six times already, less expensive than Godiva and a lot of the you know, imported European chocolates, which are really, really, really good. But Hershey's yeah. is very good value for the dollar. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you, Milton Hershey. I mean, I, I think. Thank you for those uh, extra 15 pounds. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's on me. <laughs> yeah. Well, Milton Hershey is just, you know, it's a, it work out more, Robert. Just work out more. Well, well, not actually, it's an interesting thing because they, the calorie count in his day, this was sustenance, you know, this was actual sustenance, yeah. which goes into, and you know, one of the things I love that you, you, you said, I'm, I'm going to quote you here. Pr uh, proudly, America is the fattest country in human history, <laughs> right? <laughs> because that's what abundance does. That's what wealth yeah. does. It creates this, you know, this opportunity here. And then that's where the discipline comes in, where you're like, okay, at what point does it cross over from being a joy to some kind of like addiction. I mean, they have the term chocoholics, you know, <laughs> like it, you, that's where like willpower and other things come in where uh, fortunately in in an advanced society, the, the way uh, America is today, this is not a, you know, it's not a necessity. You don't need, you know, the, the chocolate to, yeah. to survive I, the way the and, Right. It comes down to what you said, you know, people make their choices. Yeah. Uh, and so if if we want to lose weight, we we can do so, yeah. you know, eat, eat mm -hmm. fewer calories, probably, you know, you know uh, unfortunately for me, the low carb diet is probably the most effective. I say unfortunately for me, because I love pizza, pasta, bagels, chocolate chip cookies, all that stuff, yeah. you know, uh, but Reese's um, pieces. yeah, Reese's peanut butter cups. Yeah, exactly. But still, we make our choices and, yeah. you know, we, uh, you know, apply willpower, like you said, we could. We could lose that weight and just eat chocolate more sparingly. One last point I'd want to make on that is, oh, you know, being overweight is certainly has its own set of problems, but it's not nearly as lethal as living in, in one of these starving non-capitalist countries where your, so, sure. your three-year-old son or daughter literally dies of starvation at age three years old. Yeah. Yeah, we don't hear that in in not in America. No, not in America. That is not that is not the case, and that's where the abundance, the free, right. the relationship between freedom to produce and abundance that comes from it. So Hershey is one of the best examples of that, and I think yeah, eat it sparingly, everybody. <laughs> you know, so I get <laughs> I get a bag, you know, I get a bag of Hershey's Kisses after after dinner, you know, for dessert. I eat the whole bag. But no, this is not necessary. Just have a few, a few, a few yeah. kisses, and save the rest for tomorrow. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> speaking of, let me give a little plug here for watching uh, the Hero Show with Objective Standard Institute. We have a course coming up, which I want to promote. Andy's going to be leading one on films, oh, and yes, we often fun. associate watching films with eating, oh, you yeah. know, uh, candy bars as well. So, uh, yeah, four films we're going to be covering, Andy. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be it's going to be fun. Anybody who loves film. There's this rich repository of movies, even if we limit ourselves to Hollywood, never mind, you know, you know, various other you know, countries that produce some great movies. But, yeah, we're going to do four films in this first iteration uh, mm -hmm. in uh, in order. We're going to start with my favorite Alfred Hitchcock suspense thriller, Notorious. Yeah. You know, with the great Cary Grant, and Cary Grant. And great Ingrid Bergman. Uh, and it was yeah. uh, I think it was Hitchcock's first romance where he first time yeah. he integrated a, a love story into the suspense thriller. Yeah. And it's just you can't do better than Cary Grant and Ingrid Bergman. Man, yes. in a, in an Alfred in Rio Hitchcock. de Janeiro. So, so, well, yeah. What a, what a, uh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a great it's mm -hmm. a great movie. And from there to the to the original was what, 1946, I think. From there to uh, the the. Original Inherit the Wind, 1960, the Spencer Tracy, Frederick March version. Yes. What great intellectual courtroom <laughs> drama You're based yeah. on the great play by uh, Jerome Washington and Robert E. Lee. And it's just, you know, you have two of the greatest actors in Hollywood history, Spencer Tracy and Frederick March, squaring mm -hmm. off with each other. It's just a, it's just a magnificent uh, movie. You, ve you find very few movies where the conflict is as intellectual as it yes. is in inherit the wind yeah 
Mm-hmm. And then from there to how the West was won, which I think is not only the greatest Western ever made, I think it's one of the greatest movies ever made. Mm-hmm. And I, to me, it's the American epic. Right. Uh, you know, it's like uh, equivalent to, I mean, it's that you're literally to, to Homer's uh, uh, poems, you know, his, his uh, mm-hmm. epics, uh, Virgil, the Aeneid and, you know, and so yeah. on. The story, it's so American how the West was won. And you look at, you have three different yes. directors, you know, including John Ford, who did epic. the Civil War mm-hmm. scene. But it's epic. It's absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolute. Spencer Tracy narrating. I mean, it's just, you look at the cast. Carol Baker and Debbie Reynolds play the two female leads. But the mm-hmm. male leads, James Stewart, uh, Gregory Peck, Richard Widmark, Henry Fonda. You know, the young George Papa, John Wayne does a cameo in yeah. How the West Was What is absolutely an, an epic. And then to come closer to our day, we're going to yeah. conclude that because How the West Was What was 1962, we're going to include with the most uh, most violent year, uh, you know, with with Oscar Isaac and Jessica Love Chastain. Yeah, it's yeah. like Howard Rock in the fuel oil industry. Yes. Uh, and it's a it's a terrific uh, moral moral drama and yeah and just yes. just a great great all around movie so so those are the four we're gonna we're gonna come it's gonna be a fun course you know and i think i'm guessing it'll be popular because it'd be so much fun and then we could do further versions of it in the future with different movies yeah yeah april 27th that starts so you could sign up objectivestandard.org and just coming back to milton hershey and the yeah, we eat plenty of Hershey bars while we're watching how the west was won i mean what could be more american <laughs> we're about american integration here right <laughs> <laughs> stock up on the hers start buying them now so that when by the time and then watch the movies in order so that you come prepared and, and just have fun that's what yeah, we're all about oh, it's here. gonna be fun it'll be fun mm-hmm. all right well then i guess it's time uh, to salute <laughs> i think we we could salute the man who created chocolate town usa <laughs> and the the creator of the hershey the Hershey bar <laughs> and Hershey kisses and Hershey bar with almonds and yes. giving rise to the spin-off of Reese's peanut butter cups. Great stuff. Thank you, Milton. Uh, thank yes. you, Harry Reese. And uh, yes, we uh, See you next week. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be back <laughs> next week. Once again, on the hero show to study more or, to, or just to examine more great men and women as we seek to become the hero or heroine of our own lives. So we'll see you next week, everybody, on The Hero Show.